And of course, in anticipation of tour, we have the mighty Devil Skin hitting our shores again. And today I get to welcome Paul Martin from Devil Skin Bass Legend. How are you, sir? I'm really good, Rowan. Man, what an intro. Thank you, mate. Ah, oh, no, just so so very excited to be on, on your show and to be on our way to Australia. Oh, you're a gentleman, sir. Thank you very much. It's so good to speak with you again. But look, I mean, Hailstorm in 2017, Download 2019, Slash, Miles Kennedy and the Conspirators on support with that tour. Such magnificent memories, but it, it all seems so long ago. We miss you, Jenny Nail and oh. Nick over here, bro. How have you all been? <laughs> oh, oh, we've been good. You know, just it's, it's obviously super frustrating. Um, it's uh, and every band's on the same boat, you know. Or what you really need, you know. If, if anyone's come up to me and says, "Oh, what's your piece of advice for a band?" I'd go always oh, momentum. Just keep mm -hmm. an eye on your momentum, keep it up. But of course, you know, we've had two years where the we haven't been able to tour, we haven't been able to get out there and meet folk, and and yeah, we've never had that experience since we've been a band. So it's all quite new to us, and we hate we hate not being able to tour. Uh, we'll be writing stuff for sure and getting on with what we can get on with. We've managed to put in a sneaky tour and uh, a sneaky gig in January just before the alert levels changed again, yeah. like two days before. So, yeah, we've had a little bit going on, but, you know, we've got these new songs, but our, our focus at the moment is to deliver Red to Australia. That's what we really want to do. Absolutely. But before we get into Red, there's, there's one thing we've got to discuss because it leads into this quite well as a backstory. We chatted in 2019, of course, before Download and all went ahead there. Uh, we chatted uh, before Hailstorm and it all went ahead there. We caught up uh, a year later to ch chat about yeah. your mighty behemoth album, Red. It went ahead okay and has become a staple of, uh, of musical nutritional intake, as it were. But <laughs> Red Tour 2020, we didn't chat. The tour of 2021 that was planned. We didn't chat. Man, are you seeing the problem here? You've got I, to catch yeah, up with me for these things to go ahead or they turn to shit. <laughs> uh, that's it. You're the key. You're the key. All right. Thank you. Thanks oh, for inviting me. You're, you're, you're quite right. You're quite 100% uh, right. So I'm feeling a lot more confident this tour. We're not going to get like stopped at some border somewhere on the way to this. This is happening, man. And we can, we're, we're coming. It's just eight days. I mean, thanks to Silverback Touring, we finally kick off the Red Australian Tour at the Manning Bar in Sydney on Friday, April the 29th. I mean, really, to, the, the thought of actually being here again with your Aussie family right in front of you, how does it feel for you personally? How are you feeling about it all? Well, it's been weird, Ron, because, you know, up till now, we get excited, then nah, and we've had to postpone it four times. You know, it's been ridiculous. So, We've all kind of been a little bit guarded and, and and we don't want to get hurt again. But this time it's happening, so we're all like, oh, man, it's happening. It's happening. Everyone's just fizzing. The rehearsals have been amazing and and everything's just falling into place. We're bringing our crew and, yeah, everything's going to feel good. We've got Shepherd's Rain coming. It was just incredible. Man, oh, they, I just can't wait to lay them on our audience. And, of course, we're going to have... Um, Sorry, my friend, they've been hanging on this whole time. I mean, they've been on every yeah. tour poster. Have they sort of been pulling at the back of the shirt going, come on, bro, when are we going? <laughs> yeah, um, no, they've been in the same boat as us. Oh, we'll just hang on till we get the word. But, of course, you know, you've got all these people to, to manage and um, everyone getting, you know, time off their day jobs and their kids or whatever they need to do to make it all happen. So I'm, I'm absolutely stoked that they can still do this tour. Absolutely. Really am because they're, they're phenomenal live. They're just going to blow people's minds. It's so heavy and so Polynesian. It's just beautiful. It's so good. Well, we can't wait to hear them. I mean, the thought of seeing them and yourselves in the one bill is absolutely unmissable. But, I mean, what a sensational opportunity for them to tour over here in Australia as well with Devil Skin. It's got to be a very special event for them as well. What would you tell them to expect from your Australian family over here? How do you prepare them for the epic celebration that's always stage front at an Aussie Devil Skin show? <laughs> Yeah, I just told them, hey, bro, you probably will probably get eight or nine people a night. We'll be stoked if we get into double numbers, you know. But yeah, we'll just hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> never, never, ever. Oh, we're gonna, Not we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna mess with them so bad. But <laughs> uh, you know what? What they gonna? I mean, they're gonna bring a lot to the party too, because uh, a lot of them have got family in in Australia, and uh, man, the, the word spreads. And I'm sure they've got a lot of friends that will be turned up to the shows as well. 
But um, yeah, they're really excited, and and it is a great opportunity for them. It's a great opportunity for us all. But it's so cool to be in a position to be able to share this opportunity with with a band that we believe in. You know, we think, oh man, let's just take them everywhere with us. And and of course, don't forget, you know, every show we're getting um, a top notch uh, local band on the bill. That's and um, I haven't been given the list yet, but I know that the shortlist was pretty damn exciting. So, um, yeah, we're wrapped. We're, oh, I won't say too much. I've heard the rumours, but, you know, until it's uh, until yeah, it's on, on the lips of the <laughs> proverbial lady, we won't know. So if, if it was up to me, but we'd all know. But, yeah, um, yeah, I don't even <laughs> But um, it'll be, it'll be great. And, <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. It's just going to be a great night out. It'll, it'll be a great night out. We're going to have Aussie represented, New Zealand represented, and Samoa represented. It's going to be epic. It, it's unmissable, really. I mean, there's plenty of magnificent music videos out there from Devil Skin alone uh, for people to whet their appetite and whet their palate in anticipation. But probably the best preparation is to spin the album red and, and get ready for it live, mainly because this album is so phenomenally brilliant. First of all, you must be so proud of it. Oh, definitely. You know, it's, yeah, I think the whole band really stepped up for this album and I couldn't believe that you know, our ideas came to life as beautifully as they did and we, we managed to say what we intended to say. You know, the songs are, are, are pretty uh, pretty personal, you know, and, and there was in, some intense stuff there. Um, you know, like Endo, for example, Jenny's talking about her battle with endometriosis and, and you know, this, it's all raw, it's all out there and there's... You know, the, the funny thing is it's sort of increased awareness so much. Like, I didn't know that there was a, an average time of 17 years between, you know, women having symptoms and then getting diagnosed with endometriosis. But it's, it's, it's a horrible thing. So, you know, that's, there's a lot of visceral stuff for us on the, on the album. Um, the Victor was written about a car accident that we came across when we were away for a songwriting weekend, and it was just awful. It was a terrible thing. And... It was basically, I wrote the lyrics about um, sitting on the side of the road holding someone else's child, bleeding child in your hand, telling them to hold on, sort of thing. So, you know, still when we play these songs, we get the feeling and, and it's all very real to us. And and the other thing is, I guess we didn't, we just didn't get the chance to give this album its, its due um, worth, I guess, you know, by the tours being stymied and stuff like that. that we feel like we... We don't want to forget this album. We still want to go out and tour this album. We, we need people to hear it before we can move on too much. It's Absolutely. important that we... And, and it's cathartic for us also to play them live. And, and um, you know, these feelings and these these emotions behind the songs are all, all you know, totally real for us. So uh, it's a big moment being able to share stuff like that, especially internationally, especially with such an awesome, loving crowd that we always seem to get in any of our Australian shows. So uh, it's great that people do dig into our songs. And, and like you say, Red, um, we wanted to create an album that you put on and you couldn't take off until the end sort of thing. It had to be one journey with its, with its ups and downs and it's light and dark and everything. But um, you know, we put a lot of time into constructing the albums like that. And when people like yourself get it and just see the beauty that we've put into it, it's just like, man, it's the payoff, you know? And then we get to celebrate it live with you all. So that's the best part as Absolutely. well. Uh, look, I can't agree with you enough there. The, the fact is, Paul, that I think it's been done a massive uh, disservice, if you will. Not, not an injustice, because like everything in this world, it's been affected by COVID. But I can't shake the feeling that this is the time for it and it'll finally have the legs a tour schedule would usually provide. Are, are you sort of feeling that way a little bit too, that this tour internationally 100%. will really give it a rebirth? Yeah, oh, 100%. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, um, the very fact that when, when we released it, we couldn't um, we could release it digitally, but not physically. And this, I was like, oh, man, what, what? Everything possible was 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 just, um, yeah, hard when we released it. So, yeah, and then we couldn't back it up with the touring. So we all think we, we kind of r- ripped the album off, if you like. We didn't give it its due. Um love and care and get out there and, and play the song so yeah it's important for us to do this this um the red tour in australia and and you know from there next time we come over we'll definitely have some new material but at the moment this album's paramount to us to get out there and let you know play it live for folks 
Uh, I hope there's plenty of copies on hand because they're going to go like hotcakes. I mean, to, to me, the thought of hearing tracks like Eyes Red Heavy, D Do You See Birds, Corrode, no, the, the whole thing, the whole album, it just gives me goosebumps uh, because it is so diverse, it is so emotive, and it has literally, I hate using this turn of phrase, but it's something for everybody. Have you played all of the tracks from Red Live at home? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, pretty much we have. We've done everything. Um... Yeah, every song we've played live at some stage or other. Uh, we're, we're playing a pretty pretty good chunk of it um, on this tour. We'll be playing a couple of old favourites as well. But, yeah, th the album's going to get a good sing to on this tour, definitely. Um, and it's, like I say, it's cathartic for us to be able to finally play these songs and we're going to feel great afterwards, you know. It's just getting the songs out there and getting them heard was always the priority Absolutely. for us. So. Indeed. Yeah. And look, you know I have to ask about Sweet Release. I mean, will that incredibly emotive track make a, a live appearance? Um, every chance of that. Every chance of that. We're going to be swapping up the set, I think, between cities, so there's a very good chance of that. That's We've had some incredible moments on our, on our last tour with that song, just getting people to light up. There's, there's, you know, because I give it a bit of a talk first and say, hey, we're all, this song's about suicide. We need to look out for each other. And... Um, and turn around and look at the person behind you and blooming, you know, let's keep an eye on each other. Um, I always try and give a, that sort of positive message at the shows and, you know, people light up their cigarette lighters or hold their phones up and, man, we've just had some goosebump moments with that song. So it's good that it, it, people do get it and that people, you know, look, everyone's been touched by suicide in some way or other, you know, pretty much these days. So... We've got some shocking statistics here in New Zealand, um, but it's it's a, it's an awareness thing. It's a um, it, it's always really a motive to play that song live. I always get a bit of a bit of a tear and goosebumps during that song because yeah, it was, it was also real. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. As do we all, my friend. And of course, with all due respect to the memory of Nicky and his, his family and friends that are left behind to mourn his loss, he was really the, uh, I, I guess, the catalyst for this track. But as you say, it's, it's so rare that somebody in this world has not been affected in some way uh, yeah, by this. And just bad. a message to turn around and, hey, how, how you doing? How you going? It's just such an important yeah. one. Um, oh, it is. What, what was the final the final decision what prompted you to to release sweet release what what prompted you to put the song together was there one moment where you decided it has to be done um yeah it kind of was that like i wrote the bulk of the lyrics just one night and you know because i'd followed nikki's story through the the papers here and it got played out for a couple of years because no one at the um from the Ministry of Health wanted to accept any liability anywhere for it. It was just a travesty. It was horrible. And so those poor folks are getting drug, dragged through the ringer for a couple of years after a suicide. And, yeah, just I followed the story closely. And one night I just sat up and, and wrote the bulk of those lyrics. And Jenny had this chorus already. And it was just, whoa, this is meant to happen. Mm -hmm. um, so I wrote it all in, and um, we did a quick demo of it, and I went to Nikki's parents, and I had to get their blessing. You know, I'd, I'd say, look, we've written this song. It's basically about your son, and what is about your son. And um, if you know, we need your blessing, and no pressure. If you if you don't want us to do anything, we won't. And they were just blown away, and really happy for us to help spread a story. And they they're like, if we can save one life by putting a story out there. Um, so that was extremely emotional, women moment meeting the family and, and doing that and it was yeah, it was really cool so we got their blessing and we got them involved with the video shoot for that too and i think that's one of our best videos it's just captured everything and it was filmed in the place where nikki died and uh, so many th weird things happened and it was like too much of a coincidence so there were some real special moments about that and it was cool for us to be able to put some of his things in the video like his boots and his, his yeah. greenstone and to, stuff. to see those boots just doing stuff empty throughout the video is just incredibly emotive. Home, I'll, yeah. I'll be proud to be there in tears with you at the show. Don't you worry about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's such a real subject, Rowan. And it's, it touches everyone. It's We've got to do something about it. We've got to pay, make people more aware. And I, I, I don't know how your government handles it over here, but here it's shambolic. Uh, over there, sorry, here here in New Zealand, the mental health system's really broken and there's lots of people struggling. And um, I've got a motorcycle club that I ride with and we just did a, um, a fundraising run um, a couple of weeks ago and we raised $35,000 for wow. I Am Hope, which is a kids' charity. So that's, that's somewhere, it's, it's about 300 actual 
counseling sessions for for kids that need it like in, in real terms you know that's what it translates to so there's all these people doing all these fundraisers and all these charities for the mental health here because the the government's just not cutting it so um with devil skin we've always been involved with with charity things we've done fundraisers for st john's ambulance and and all sorts and it's just a platform where hey we can we can help raise a couple of bucks for these people let's do it you know um it's just giving back just giving back we, we need our audience we want everyone to be in, in one piece and and okay you know so absolutely um, and just we're in right i mean i'm not making noise on the harley myself or whatever you're all riding the, the fact is people look at us a bit sideways but to think that you know yeah. that sort of tribute that sort of dedication to saving kids lives is out there to, yeah. i'll take my hat off to you yeah. i really don't right we, we, had, we had over 500 bikes Wow. And I was saying 90, 95% Harleys uh, as well. But yeah, it was a big, as a, um, as a big gathering of people. And, you know, and we did charity auctions afterwards and, and someone paid you know, over three grand for a, for a devil skin merch and guitar pack, you know, that we signed up for them. So um, it's, people want to help and uh, it's cool to have a platform where you can do good, you know, and you make people aware of things. And, and for me, songwriting, I, I take it, I take it very seriously. Um, lyrics especially because you can give a crap message you know if you're flippant with your lyrics or you know I've never been a fan of lyrics that are that trite you know la la goo goo you know girl meets boy whatever you know to me songs have to come from a place um whether it's an experience or a feeling or a dream or whatever it's got to come from somewhere um and yeah I, I feel really 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 grateful to still be in a position where I, I get to write songs with the people i love and record record them as well as we do and um and you get your message out there and when someone comes up says you know we've had people come up at a show and this girl said you know um burning tree saved my life if, you know if i hadn't dug into that song i wouldn't be here now and she showed us all her scars from from trying to com uh, commit suicide and stuff so there's some We've got some real power with with songs and um it's 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 a cool thing to have and at a rock show you feel you feel all the emotions you feel the community the love the the you know um and the fact that we're all there for a purpose we love loud raucous rock music you know oh um, to, to, it's a cathartic experience for all of us my friend stage front of you up on stage it really is yeah 100 um, we all um, need it Oh, we do. But I mean, with your music, particularly the, the music of Devil Skin, I, I can't think of a more apt title for an album like The River. I mean, that's that describes your music. It is. It's a journey. It's a river that can, keeps continuing. Red is just the, the latest recording. We can't wait to hear more music, but to hear Red in Australia coming up is going to be so very special, my friend. I realise you pressed the time. Well, we've got Friday, the 29th of April at the Manning Bar in Sydney. We've got Brisbane at Mansfield Tavern. Sunday, the 1st, the Gold Coast at the Cool and get a hotel Thursday the 5th of May Adelaide at the one and only Gov Friday the 6th of May over in Perth they'll be absolutely thrilled to see you at the amplifier and of course the Max Watts Saturday May 7th watch out I will be stage front my friend yelling and screaming at you with everybody else but thank you so much for your time Paul the news that you're coming back is just so brilliant and we can't wait to see you Ryan, thanks so much mate we're, we're honestly we're so excited for this gig we're going to be you know giving every every everything we can to it you know enjoying every second that we are in your beautiful country and thanks so much for the continued support bro you've had a, had our back from right from the very beginning and and we're stoked that we can get to blim and um raise a raise a bevy with you again and and enjoy some loud raucous rock and roll music but you know w without you and your audience and your support and everything like that we, you know we wouldn't be able to do this so an, an immense thank you from all of us thanks man pleasure indeed absolute pleasure from your lips to god's ears nothing will stop us now it's all happening nothing, <laughs> nothing can stop it mate thank you we'll see you all shortly anytime man